first class lounges with unlimited food and drink, free selection of any seat, and potentially no one sat next to you in economy, as well as better reward flight availability. These are just a few of the benefits that you can get with BA Gold status. But how do you get this, and how much money will it actually set you back? Well, I recently got gold for the very first time, and in this video, I'm going to break down the flights I took to get that status, how much they cost me, and how you can earn this for less if you follow a few key principles and avoid some of my mistakes. But let's start with a few quick basics about how status is actually earned. So, so for every cash booking with BA and its one world partners, you'll earn tier points. The further you're flying and the higher the class of travel that you're in, the more tier points you'll earn. And to get gold status, you need 1,500 tier points within the year, as well as doing four qualifying flights. Now, I originally never set out to earn gold status this year. The benefits you get for silver status are more than enough for me. You know, at that level, you're getting your uh, business class lounge access, you've got fast track, you know, you've got free seat selection as well. Um, granted, you don't get the front row until you've got gold status, but getting free seat selection is usually good enough anyway. Um, so I wasn't really going to go out my way to get that status. But from a lot of flights that I was doing anyway or had to take, I was starting to get pretty close to that gold status or at least had you know, way more tier points than I normally would have. And at that point, I started to think it might be worth going out of my way a bit to earn the gold status. Next year, I'm doing a period of extended travel where I will be flying on the majority of the major One World Airlines. And most of those flights were booked with points. So I thought it would be worthwhile getting gold status this year for two reasons. Firstly, because of the soft landing that you get to silver, it means that next year I won't really need to worry about earning tier points to retain that level of status. You know, because I'm doing so many Avios flights, I'm not going to be earning that many tier points. So having the soft landing just secures that for longer. And then secondly, because a lot of the airports that I'm going to have got some really good first class lounges, even though I'm going to be traveling in either business class or economy for a lot of these routes, I'll still be able to access that first class lounge and experience what that's like. Another thing I should say before we get into the detail is that I did this way more expensively than you need to. So a lot of our trips were booked last minute. So because of our work, we were quite limited about which days we can take off when. Um, so a lot of these trips are centered around bank holiday weekends, things like that. Obviously, the flights at those times of year are a lot more expensive, as are the hotels. So when we book things as BA holidays, that's added a lot of costs as well. So keep in mind, you can do this for a lot cheaper than I have done it. So let's get into the flights I took, why I took them and how much they cost. So the first one is one I'm not going to go into too much detail. Um, we did need to go out to Australia um, unexpectedly at the last minute. Um, so we did just book the cheapest flight we could get, which was an economy flight with uh, Qatar. That trip did cost just under two and a half thousand per person. So this trip, it did earn 230 tier points. Um, we traveled from Edinburgh to Qatar and onwards from there to Perth. And then on the way back, we went Perth to Doha to London and then up to Newcastle. One thing I would say about this trip though, is it really demonstrated the value of having status to me. So even though we booked it quite last minute, because Qatar do charge for seat selection, we were still able to book the exit row on every single flight. So obviously it's a long way to go in an economy seat. So having that extra leg room was really, really valuable. And then when we were in Qatar as well, we were able to access the lounge to at least get some decent food to recharge um, and we were able to get a shower to freshen up as well. Um, so it just made that you know, 24 hour travel day a lot more bearable. So the second trip that we did was one we booked as a BA holiday. And this was one where we booked multiple different flights and hotels as part of the stay. So, so we initially flew down to Heathrow from Newcastle in an economy flight. We then went from there over to Gatwick, stayed the night at the Sofitel in Gatwick, which was all part of the same booking. Um, the next morning we flew out to Orlando in premium economy. Uh, we then had five nights in Orlando. We stayed at a Universal Studios Hotel, which again was part of the BA holiday. And we then made our way over to Puerto Rico. This was actually booked on a separate flight just because of the way the flight times and availability were working out. We flew from Orlando to Puerto Rico, and that was done with JetBlue economy. So not part of this booking, doesn't earn any tier points. Uh, when we were in Puerto Rico, we did a one week Caribbean cruise, Royal Caribbean. And then after that cruise, we had an American Airlines flight in business class back to Miami. We then had a bit of a layover in Miami before flying in BA Club World back to London, and then from Heathrow back up to Newcastle in Club Europe. We were initially booked entirely in economy and premium economy, but a couple of weeks before the trip, uh, we did decide to call up and inquire about an upgrade and decided to upgrade that um, return leg into business. 
And because this was a BA holiday that included more than five days of accommodation, we got double tier points for this trip. Um, so the total cost of the trip, it was £3,244 per person. But we did each earn 700 tier points. Just from these first two trips, I was already at 930 tier points. So you only need 600 for silver, so I was already way over that target for the year. And this was the most tier points that I've ever earned in a year. For the last kind of 12 months or so, I've not really done a huge amount of premium travel. It's only in the last kind of year, year and a half that I've started taking a lot more business class flights, premium economy. And usually when I've been doing those, it's been with points. So earning this many tier points has been quite new to me. Um, and I thought, mm, maybe I should go for gold, but the benefits at this time just weren't quite standing out to me. Uh, trip number three was over Easter bank holiday weekend. So as I mentioned earlier, there's kind of limited days that we had available uh, for annual leave to be able to go away. So Easter bank holiday weekend seemed like a great time uh, to get away. Um, we booked this trip as a BA holiday and it involved flying from Newcastle down to Heathrow and stayed over at the Soap Hotel in Heathrow. The next morning we flew over to Belgrade with British Airways. Uh, this was just an economy flight at this time. I wasn't really chasing the tier points and we just wanted to keep the cost for the bank holiday weekend as low as possible. So we flew over in economy, stayed in a hotel in uh, Belgrade for a couple of days. Uh, we then took an Air Serbia flight over to Budapest. Uh, which obviously wasn't part of the BA holiday booking, that was just a separate flight. Uh, but then a couple of days in Budapest before we flew back in a economy flight again, over to Heathrow and up to Newcastle. So that initial flight, Newcastle to Heathrow and economy gave us 10 tier points. It was then another 10 to go from Heathrow to Belgrade. The flight from Budapest to Heathrow was 20 tier points. Um, I guess just when we booked it, it happened to be a higher tier of economy at the time. A final flight, Heathrow to Newcastle, was only five tier points. So all in all on that one, we earned 45 tier points. Uh, the total cost of the BA holiday was £675 per person. However, when I've looked at what the hotel cost would have been if we booked this separately, it would have been about £245 each. So if I take that off to figure out what the flights would have been if I just booked these as standalone flights, it probably would have been about £430 each. So it is quite an expensive one. Like I say, Easter weekend, booked relatively last minute. It was always going to cost a bit. If you look at that at a pounds per tier point kind of range, uh, we're looking at £9.55 per tier point, which is an incredibly expensive way of earning tier points. Um, but obviously this was just a holiday we were wanting to do anyway. So the next one I did was over to Copenhagen. So again, starting in Newcastle, did Newcastle down to Heathrow, Heathrow to Copenhagen, Copenhagen to Heathrow, and then Heathrow back to Newcastle. Um, the main reason for this trip was to just position myself in Copenhagen for an incredible deal that I'd got on a Finnair flight to Qatar. I was a bit blinded by how good that um, Finnair deal was that I just went ahead and booked it without even seeing how much it would be to get to Copenhagen to start the flight. Um, again, because it was relatively last minute, the flights were quite expensive. There was no good Avios availability. Um, and I just thought, you know what, I'm getting to this point now where, you know, I've got quite a few tier points, probably the most I've ever got. Is it worth just trying to rack up a few? I knew we were gonna have a few trips later in the year that might get me close to gold. Maybe it's worth upgrading to business to get extra tier points. And when I did that price comparison between economy and business class, it was actually very little between the two. Annoyingly, I didn't write down the exact figure at the time, but I believe it was only about 150 quid to 200 pound difference between the economy and the business class. Now, given how expensive the economy ticket was showing, um, chances are I would have been earning, you know, 20 tier points for the um, longer leg, maybe 10 for the shorter one. So I would have probably got about 60 tier points if I did it in economy. But upgrading that to business class just meant that I was getting 160 tier points. And if I only need to spend an extra 150 to 200 pounds to get an extra 100 tier points, to me, that's well worth it. If you're ever getting two pounds per tier point, that's about as good as it gets. You can do better sometimes, but very, very rarely. However, that's how much it was extra. So that marginal gain was worthwhile upgrading, but the overall cost of it was still quite pricey. So it ended up being £662 for those flights. So overall worked at £4.13 per tier point. So I still earned the tier points at a cheaper rate than I was on the previous trip at least. Uh, we were then getting into May and we didn't really have any plans for late May bank holiday weekend and we wanted to get away. Again, as I said before, we're quite limited with the annual leave we had available to be able to do these flights. So using the bank holiday weekend seemed like a good idea. 
Um, we also had a £200 e-voucher with British Airways to use, which we'd got earlier in the year after a complaint. So knowing that we had that, we thought, well, maybe actually we can find ourselves a decent business class flight and it won't cost as much as it otherwise would because we've got this discount to use. So there were a few criteria we were looking at for this trip. Firstly, we wanted to be able to fly out of Terminal 3 of Heathrow. Um, Terminal 3 has got loads of different One World airline lounges that we wanted to go to all of them. So in addition to the BA lounge, there's an American Airlines lounge, there's the brilliant Cafe Pacific lounge, there's the great Qantas lounge. So we wanted to fly out of there to give all those a go. We'd done something similar the previous year, really enjoyed it, so we wanted to go back again and try all those lounges. Um, we also both have an Amex Platinum, which includes an overseas dining credit. Um, and this allows us each to spend £150 overseas at certain restaurants. And based on other flights that we had booked at the time, we weren't sure if we were going to actually be able to use that credit this year. So we were quite keen to find something that flew from Terminal 3 that also had restaurants that were in this offer. Eventually we settled on Vienna. It was a city that we both really wanted to go to. I'd been once before, but had never properly explored it. It was all part of an interrail trip where I was pretty wiped out by the time I got there. And we knew there were tons of restaurants we can use the Amex Platinum for there. So whilst we were away, we knew that we wouldn't pay a single thing for food. And on the way out, we got a nice long layover in Terminal 3 to be able to enjoy those lounges. Again though, it was a bank holiday weekend. We booked it fairly late. We did have the £200 off voucher this time, so £100 each we managed to reduce the fare by, but it did still cost us £545.50 per person for that, which is not terrible, but if we didn't have that voucher, then it would have been £645 each, which is maybe less worthwhile. But anyway, we earned 160 tier points for that cost, so it works out at about £3.40 per tier point. And at this point following that trip, I had 1,295 tier points. I knew at this point that it was going to be worth doing the extra for gold. Um, we'd started to think about doing quite a lot of travel for next year by this point. And given how close I was to gold, I thought, you know what, it is worth pushing to get that for the first time. Now, the cheapest thing to do at this point would have probably been to just do one trip uh, to somewhere in Eastern Europe, maybe like Sofia, Bulgaria. But I have done that before last year and I kind of wanted to do something different. And I did also have in mind this YouTube channel. I wanted to go somewhere that would be a bit different, something that would make an interesting video for you. So what I ultimately settled on was doing a trip to Madrid. Now I knew it wouldn't get me all the points, but it would get me very close. It would get me another 160 tier points, which would then put me just 45 tier points away from what I needed. And the other benefit of going to Madrid was that I could fly with Iberia. So I'll be trying out an airline that I've not featured on the channel previously. Um, Iberia also sometimes fly their long haul aircraft on these routes. So it meant that on the way out, I was able to try an A330 and on the way back, try an A320. So I was able to get those two different experiences. And I was also hoping for some good weather. Now that didn't quite work out. It was raining pretty much the whole time I was away, or at least it was a bit dreary, but oh well. But anyway, the cost of those flights ended up being £688, which works out at £4.30 per tier point. And at this point, I had just 45 tier points left to get. So I wanted to think about what is the cheapest possible way that I can obtain these points. And at this point, the method I chose wouldn't necessarily give me the best tier point per pound, but it would be the cheapest thing to do overall. And I realised that I could fly from Newcastle down to Heathrow in economy, and then back up to Newcastle again in business class, and that would give me exactly the 45 tier points that I needed. So I found a weekend that I had no plans. So I just did it as a day trip, flying down. Um, it was meant to be an economy, but they did actually upgrade me to business class on the way down. Um, however, you still only get the tier points of the flight you booked. So I did only still get the five tier points for that, not 40. Um, and then I did get 40 on the way back up for the 45 that I needed. That round trip cost me £146, so that works out at £3.24 per tier point. So what did this cost me overall? The grand total for all of these flights, and I will say as well, it's not just the flights, so where I've got the double tier points for the BA holiday, I've included the cost of the whole holiday. So it is a bit more than the, just the flights individually, but the total cost came to £8,180. So that means on average, I paid £5.45 per tier point which is quite a bit, to be honest. Now, as I said, I've been quite restricted by the times that we can go away. And for most of these trips where I've earned the bulk of the points, I wasn't going out of my way to earn them. These were just trips I was gonna take anyway. 
you know, that trip in January that earned us 700 points, that was a brilliant trip. And I think for everything that we got out of that, with the type of flights that we did and the accommodation we had, I think we got brilliant value for that, to be honest. And for a lot of the other trips as well, although we did spend quite a bit, when you look at what the economy flight would have been, we wouldn't have actually saved that much by downgrading. So it was worth just paying that bit extra to get the business class fare, get the points we needed. And given our plans for next year, this is well worth having now. You know, we've just spent over half a million Avios on various first class, business class and economy flights going all over the world. Having this goal status now, what does it mean for me? It primarily means that we'll be able to access first class lounges when we're not traveling first class. It also means that when we're traveling in business with BA, we can pick the front row. And on our BA economy flights, it means there's a better chance of having the seat next to us blocked out. But I will say, if you are specifically targeting gold status, you can do this for a lot cheaper. Whilst not easy, it is possible to earn tier points at a rate of two pound per tier points or less. But yeah, ultimately, I didn't do this in an optimal way. I didn't set out to earn gold status initially, but because of trips that I had to do or because of the timings of them, it just so happened that I got close to earning the status and decided that it was worth just doing those few extra trips or upgrading a few trips um, to make sure that I get those points. And if you do want a few more tips about how you can earn tier points for less, watch this one next.